In the previous video, we saw what it meant to have the power of the .NET ecosystem at our side when we are building Blazor applications. In this video, I want to show you that we also have the power of the JavaScript ecosystem at our side. For example, here we have our application that we have been building, here we have some records from the database, and if I click on delete, we see that we get this confirm message here, which allows us to confirm the operation. Though this is functional, it is not really visually appealing. So what can we do about it? Well, we can use a library called Sweet Alert, which allows us to use more appealing messages. For example, if I show this success message, you can see that this looks actually better. This looks more modern. So how can we use this on our Blazor application? The first thing we need to do is to download the library into our project. For that, we can come down here where we are going to find a CDN we are going to copy this line of code. We are going to go to Visual Studio. Let's go to the Solution Explorer. And I am going to look for the index.html file which is on the www root folder. I'm using index.html because I am using a Blazor WebAssembly application. Nevertheless, if you are using a server side Blazor application, you must use the host.html file. So I'm going to come here and I will paste the script here. Now we have access to all the code from this library in our application. But as we know, this is JavaScript code. So we will have to use the IJS runtime helper to make use of this code. To make things easier, we are going to create a class that is going to encapsulate all the operations that we can do against the Sweet Alert library. So for that, we are going to go to the Solution Explorer. Let's go to helpers and here we have a file called IJS runtime extensions in which we are placing everything that is related to JavaScript. So this is a good place to start. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to emulate some of the examples that we see in this page. Let's start with the most simple one, which is the first one, a basic message. If we click here, we have any fool can use a computer and an OK button and we can close it. I want to emulate that. So I am going to copy this code and I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new method here that is going to return a value task. It is going to return a value task because the message that we will display doesn't actually have to return anything. So I will call this method display message. It will be a, an extension method. So I'm going to say this ijs runtime js and we will receive a message as a parameter. Now here what we're going to do is to say return js invoke void async. We're going to paste this code, but we're going to delete this. And we're just going to say that we want to invoke the swal.fire function and we want to pass it as a parameter, the message that we have here. And let me fix this. Let's put a semicolon here. And now this is it. We can actually test this now. So for that, let's go back to the index.resor file. Let's go to the bottom of the page. Let's go to the delete method and we're just going to say js dot display message and I will just display my message and let's do an await here. Now I can compile my application. I can go back to Google Chrome. Let's go back to our application. Let's refresh the page. I can click on delete and here it is. We are using Sweet Alert from our application and we have the confirm message here also. Let's see what else we can do. Well, we have the option of using a title and an icon. For example, if we click on this, we're going to have this icon here, this title here, and this message down here. Let's emulate that too. Let's go back to our class. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And let's go back to our helper class. And we're going to create a new method, which is going to be an overload of this one that is going to accept a title and the type of message that we want to display. So for that, I will just copy and paste this and I will add a title here and the type of message I am going to add it here. But since the type of message is already defined by Sweet Alert, and by that I mean that there is a selection of type of messages. For example, we have the type here, the type parameter, and this can be warning, error, success, info, and question. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to create an enum with these values. For that, I am going to come down here and I will say public enum, sweet alert message type. And I'm going to say question 
question, warning, error, success, and info. And here I will say, sweet alert message type, sweet alert message type. And here we can pass the title, the message, and the type of the message. We have to go back here and see that we have the right order. So it's going to be first the title, then the message, and then the type. So first the title, then the message, and then the type. And we're going to say to a string. And that's actually it. With that, we have already emulated this new kind of message that have a title and a type. For example, let's come here, let's say my title, and let's pass a success type of message. And with that, we can compile the application again. Let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh our application. I can click on delete. And we can see we have this icon here. We have the title here and we have the message here. So things are working. Let's click on cancel. And now let's fix our problem. Our problem was the normal JavaScript confirm that was not really appealing. Let's see if Sweet Alert can help us with that. And they actually can. They have here a confirm dialog which will allow us to have two buttons, a cancel and a yes deleted, which will allow us to simulate the JavaScript confirm. So let's use this. Nevertheless, this is different because as you know, the JavaScript confirm returns a boolean, which indicates whether the user confirms the operation or not. And now we want to emulate that with this method. So how are we going to do it? Well, what we are going to do is that we are going to use a promise in JavaScript so that if the user clicks on OK, then we are going to return through. And if the user clicks on cancel, then we are going to return false. So how can we do that? Well, we are going to go back to Visual Studio. If you remember from my previous video, we have a JS file here called helpers.js and we can use that. What we are going to do here is that we are going to create a function that will contain a promise that will return what the user wants to happen, whether he wants to delete a person or not. So let's call this function custom confirm. We're going to receive here a title, a message, and a type of message, of sweet alert message. And we're going to return a new promise. We're going to say resolve. And now let's go back to Google Chrome and we're going to copy this code. Let's paste it here. And we're going to modify this. We're going to say title because we want to display the title that the user sends, the message, and the type. We are also going to modify this confirm button text. I am going to say just confirm operation, although this could also be a parameter of the function. And here we have then, which is going to be executed when the person clicks a button. It says if result.value, which means that the user clicked on confirm, then what we want to do in this case? Well, we want to return true. For that, we're going to use this resolve variable that we have here, and we're going to say true. Otherwise, we can say resolve false. Of course, you could do this in a single line of code, but we're going to do it this way anyway. And let's put a semicolon here. And that's actually it from the point of view of the JavaScript. Let's go to our class and actually use the function that we just created. For that, we are going to copy this method and we're going to paste it here. We're only going to change its name. We're going to say confirm, although we are not going to use invoke void async, but we're going to say invoke async. And what are we going to receive from the JavaScript function? Well, a Boolean, either true or false. And we have to say bool here too. And now we can copy this name, custom confirm, and we will substitute this for custom confirm. And that's pretty much it. We're now ready to use our new and visually appealing confirm. Let's go back to index.razor file and let's change this for confirm. Now we need a title. The title of the message is going to be confirm. The message is going to be, do you want to delete this person? And we need a type of message, which is going to be a question since we're asking a question. Now, finally, let's comment this code and let's compile our application by pressing Control shift b let's go back to google chrome let's go back to our application let's refresh the application and now if we click on delete we are going to get this message which is more appealing confirm do you want to delete test test is the name of the person if i click on cancel then nothing happens but if i click on confirm 
Then as you can see, the person is deleted. So as you can see, we do not only have the power of the .NET ecosystem when we are using Blazor, we also have the power of the JavaScript ecosystem at our side, which means you can use the best of both ecosystems to develop your applications. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.